welcome back to my channel. Um, first off, if you think I did something with my hair and it's darker, it's not, it's just wet. I'm sorry to come on here looking like this. I'm trying very hard to be my normal self in this video, but if you notice that I'm more quiet, it is because you'll understand. Um, so a little bit of a life update. I'm really sorry. I know my channel has gone without videos for months now. <coughs> and that is very unlike me. Before this, I think the longest I'd gone without uploading was like a week or two. Um, when I had um, gotten sick last year and like computer internet issues and whatever. But I've been really consistent with my channel since I started it. And that was something that I was really proud of. I feel like you're a little tilted, but I'm having a hard time today on my camera. So anyways, um, I just wanted to come on here and apologize for that and kind of give you a little bit of a life update and explanation as to what's been going on. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have stuck with me. Um, my subscriber count didn't really fall very much and I really, really appreciate that. I know a lot of you guys here are going to be very understanding and very loving and so I'm thanking you ahead of time for your support. Um, basically, I've... There's been a lot going on in my life since January in terms of school. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of ups and downs in school. Um, and in my personal life, I had a lot of great things happening and then some not so great things happening. And there was just a lot going on. But that didn't really stop me from, from putting out my videos in January, February. You guys saw I was actually overall in a really good place, better than I've been in a long time, and I was happy and everything was good. Um, I did pre-film some videos during March break because I knew that with finals and stuff, it's always good for me to have some pre-filmed content. But I had no idea that I would be out for so long, and basically I'm just going to go ahead and say it because my voice is already getting tired. I, about the mid middle of March, right around Easter, I got strep throat. I've had strep throat before and it sucks, you're often, every time I've had it I've been very sick. Um, but you know, usually you take an antibiotic and within like 10 days to 2 weeks you're back up and running. So I went to the doctor and just putting it out there that every time I went to the doctor in the story I had to go to a walk-in clinic and speak to someone different because my um, doctor, family doctor, is currently on maternity leave, so that made this situation a lot more difficult, a lot more complicated. So I went to a walk-in clinic and kind of just, you know, went in and said, I think I have strep throat. I tested positive for strep throat. They gave me an antibiotic for 10 days, and I told the doctor, you know, like, I really need this to work. I'm right about to go into my final exams. At this point, this was the final stretch. It was like... Um, when all my final projects and presentations were due, and then finals were right after that. And he said, take this for 10 days. Um, it's an antibiotic in the penicillin family. It's the strongest, best thing for a strep throat, and you should be good. I take it for 10 days, and although I started to feel a little bit better, my throat never really changed. It, my tonsils were very swollen, and there was all that yucky white stuff at the back of my throat. But I started to feel better, it wasn't hurting me as much, and so I kind of just, at the end of it, because they say sometimes that antibiotics can linger in your system a little bit after you finish them, so like I'm just going to wait it out for a week or so and like see how I feel. Well the week went by and I didn't really start to get any better, it kind of stayed the same for a little bit, and then I got into finals and I put myself on power mode to study, and at this point is when I was dealing with a lot of shit going on. Everything started falling apart in a lot of different ways. And I was just not in a good place. And so filming took the back burner at this point, but I did have some pre-filmed videos that I was still working on to try and keep my channel somewhat consistent, keep some video up for you guys. But then things started to get worse and I do this thing when I'm really upset about something or I tend to avoid it and throw myself into something else to make myself feel better and I've come to realize that when something's going on and that you feel really sad and upset about it, I'm not saying to linger in your this feeling and, and uh, what's the word, wallow or dwell in this feeling for so long that it takes over your life, um, but to give yourself a few days to mourn things or to be sad or 
when something doesn't work out or whatever, you know, whatever's going on in your life, you should take those few days to feel sad and cry and watch things or talk to people, whatever you need to do. Because when you don't do that, like for me, I didn't take the time to process what was going on when it was happening because I was sick and I was focused on staying healthy enough to be able to get to my finals and do my exams. So I threw myself into school and I said, I'm not going to let this thing that had just like come and go in my life basically since January affect what I've always worked so hard for which is school. That was always my main priority, my main focus and it's what's most important to me. It's what I always focus on. So I put all my focus, all my energy in that and studied as hard as I could and because I was so distracted I didn't really take the time to process what was going on and I felt fine, you know, to a certain extent. And then Meanwhile, in April, no videos went up because I was sick. I was studying 20 hours of 24. I was barely sleeping. Um, I was very, it was just not good. I was very unhealthy at this point. So I didn't even have time to upload my pre-filmed videos. There were a few videos that went up here and there. I don't even at this point remember. I think it's been two months there haven't been videos on my channel. Anyways, long-winded story to say that I finished my finals on Friday night. Um, and that Friday was one of the hardest days I've had in a long time for a lot of different reasons. Um, I came home and I was like, it's summer, like, now I can just relax, focus on getting better. Well, the next day I wasn't working. And that day I did not feel well. It's almost like, you know, when you're go, 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 you don't have time to, like, think and stop and realize how you're feeling. And then as soon as you stop, you, like, fall apart. That's kind of what happened. So the next day I wasn't feeling well, I mean like physically I wasn't feeling well and I couldn't do anything, I had no energy. And so I kind of just like watched TV, laid on the couch, I didn't do much because I knew the next day I had to work all day on Sunday. Sunday I woke up and I went in the shower and I literally couldn't even take my shower before work. I felt like I was going to fall over, I couldn't stay up, I had to, my mom had to tell me out of the shower, I... I just, I felt like I was just going to fall over in the shower. Not even so much like a fainting feeling, just like I couldn't hold myself up anymore. I was like, I don't know if I can go to work. I ended up going to work, toughing it out. It got a little better as the day went on, and my throat started to get worse and worse, and I knew I was like, my stupid strep throat, it's n it never left. So the next morning, I go to the clinic, and again, I see the same doctor actually that I'd seen the first time. And then we did a strep test, and I tested negative for strep throat. And I was really discouraged at this point because I was feeling the exact same way I was the first time. Like, what's any different this time? Um, and at this point, it had been about two weeks since I finished my medication, so they didn't think that the fact that I would have just finished medication would throw off the test. Like, they were like, there's only a 5% chance that you have a false negative test. Um, we don't think that it's strep throat and they wanted to test for mono and um, the test for mono is a blood test I think I have mentioned on my channel before I know to a lot of you guys this is going to sound very irrational and stupid so I'm not going to dwell on it for a long time but one of my biggest fears are needles and I know that's stupid because I know on a day-to-day -day basis I put myself through worse struggles and pains and everything like that but I couldn't, when I hear the word needle or have to have a blood test, like, I literally instantly go into panic mode and have a panic attack. My anxiety is through the roof. I, li I literally panic and then pass out and, like, faint. Um, and that's what was happening and I was there all by myself and I was freaking out. And the nurse was like, listen, and if you haven't eaten anything, she's like, you are not in a state to do this. Like, you, you obviously, like, we can't, they couldn't get me to calm down enough to be able to do it. So she's like, look, if you need to come back with someone on another day, like, she's like, to me, if you want my, my personal opinion, I think you're still considered viral. At this point, they had mentioned that it was very unlikely that it was a viral infection, throat infection, because the first time... 
I tested positive for strep throat. The antibiotics did help me a little bit. It's not like I didn't react to them at all, which if it was a viral um, throat infection, I wouldn't have reacted to antibiotics at all. And they said this is a really long time for an infection to go on. Usually the longest it would be would be 10 days, two weeks, and at this point it had been like three weeks. So basically they sent me home and said there's nothing we can do for you at this point. Monitor it. Um, they said if it is mono, there's nothing we can do anyways. So the best thing we can tell you is for two weeks, sleep. Sleep as much as you can. And I noticed I was very tired, but I assumed that that was because of my finals, that I was barely sleeping at all during finals. So that was kind of coming out. And then I was also sick, and when you have like some sort of infection, you also don't feel well, you're more tired. So they said sleep as much as you can. If you sleep 18 hours a day, like sleep 18 hours a day. And when you're not sleeping, lay on the couch and do absolutely nothing to really rest your body and if you do that for two weeks if it's mono you're gonna start to feel better um, you might still be very tired but that'll like take care of those like symptoms that were affecting me that much like the throat and try and like kill me in that way because that's all you can do so I was like okay and I was really discouraged because I didn't have anything but I was like if that's what it is and then, then that's what I'll do so that was on a Monday uh, that night, I actually had a Tori Kelly concert, which was absolutely amazing. Um, but I went there, and I was so sick. I was so, so sick, and I couldn't eat. And at this point, since probably the beginning of March, I had zero appetite, which has never been an issue for me. I was never hungry. I would eat because my mom would be like, you have to eat something, but I was never hungry. I would eat, like... A third or a fourth of what I would usually eat and I'd feel so full that I was going to be sick if I ate more. So that was something that was weird and kind of out of nowhere. And at this point I couldn't eat because my throat was so swollen and hurt so bad to swallow. I just couldn't eat. I had a hard time drinking. I wasn't doing good. And so I went to the concert that night. I was very careful. I did not talk. I did not sing. It was like, like, it sucked that I had to, you know, experience my concert that way but it was what it was anyways I go home that night and it was just getting worse and worse and then I slept a little bit but very on and off I didn't sleep well at all that night the next day I was up like at six in the morning so I couldn't sleep and the next day the as the day went on it got worse and worse and worse and that evening was I was so sick. Even my parents, like, they didn't know what to do with me. Like, I felt like I was going to die. Like, I felt like I was dying. And I know that probably sounds like an extreme over-exaggeration, but, like, I wouldn't say that if that's not how. I've never felt so sick and so helpless in my whole life. Because at this point, my throat was so swollen it was, there was no more, I don't know how to explain it, other than there was no more hole at the back of my throat. You know you have that little thing that dangles in the middle and then your tonsils are usually flat? Well, mine were like huge, swollen. Um, the whole back of my throat, everything was touching. There was no more hole where like you can swallow, you know? And I was so, I did not sleep one minute that night because I, I genuinely thought, I was like, if I fall asleep, I'm going to, I'm not going to wake up, I'm going to stop breathing, because I was having so much trouble breathing, and that's one thing that I've known for a long time, because my dentist had told me I had little white spots, or like yellowish spots on my teeth, like spots that weren't the same color as the rest of my teeth, on my two front teeth, and I'd asked him one time what that was, and he basically told me um, either that it was probably because if I had any like nose problems, if you guys know I have a very small nose, um, and the doctors have always suspected that I have very small, like, passageways, which would make sense. Um, so I don't have regular breathing in my nose. I've always had issues with my sinuses and my nose and my ears kind of thing. So at night, I've trained myself. My brain has, like, learned since I was very little. I programmed myself to breathe through my mouth. And I don't sleep with my mouth open very wide. It's still very small, but just enough that, like, the front, the bottom of my, the top bottom of my teeth um, get air on them constantly and that's what was changing the color of my teeth. He said it's not a big deal, you can't even see it from far, only you would notice that. And so I knew from a long time that I would breathe through my mouth at night and I think that's why for me this was so scary because I don't breathe through my nose on a regular, especially overnight. I breathe through my mouth and at this point I, have, I was having so much trouble breathing. I hadn't eaten in like two, three days, I wasn't drinking, I literally couldn't do anything. 
the most disgusting part was that I had so much spit in my mouth because it's something that like your body does. It produces more saliva when there's something in your mouth that's not supposed to be there. So like my big huge swollen things at the back of my throat. And it was like, I was like drooling, I couldn't swallow my saliva, I had to spit it out. I know this is really graphic and gross, I'm so sorry, but I'm just trying to give you guys a sense of how it's felt. That night was horrible. The next morning, I was in tears, I was like, look, we have to do something. We went back to the clinic, and I was like, if they don't give me something today, we need to go to the hospital because I'm not going to make it. And I'm saying this now like in okay but like that day I was just I couldn't even open my mouth close my mouth that's how big it was it was just kind of at a standstill in like this position and that was it you know um so anyways so I went to the clinic and that doctor saw my mouth and basically told me my tonsils were about to rupture if I would waited any longer it could have gotten like I guess extremely dangerous I don't know um, and so he prescribed me an antibiotic right away and a steroid to, um, bring down the swelling and make me able to breathe again and stuff like that. So I started that right away and within, I would say, five, six hours I started to feel a lot better in terms of I could breathe. I still couldn't swallow, I still couldn't, it was still very swollen, but I could breathe and that was a huge relief. So anyways, I was on, I'm giving you the fast version here because I feel like this video is already quite long and I'm on my way to work actually. So I was on that medicine for two weeks and I got so close to getting rid of it. My throat looked better than it had since like February or January. It was like smooth, the white stuff was gone, the swelling was almost back to normal, it was looking really good. And at this point I had a trip planned for Florida for like a while and I didn't know if I should go or not. But I was like, look, like I had done the two weeks rest like they said, doing nothing. I was still very tired and lethargic and didn't have any energy. I still don't have my strength. I'm not able to lift anything. Just lifting my laptop is really, really difficult. Um, but anyways, they were like, you know what, like, go see how you feel. The medicine, like, you're looking good. Like, the medicine should have taken care of it. Because most normal people take one antibiotic and they're good. This was my second one, so nobody thought anything of it. They thought you're going to be good. I get to Florida and about three days in I finish my medicine and for those three days I was doing pretty well. I wasn't doing much. I was pretty much just laying out in the shade. Um, very, I would get tired very easily. Like I went shopping for like 20 minutes one day and I just had to go home and sit down. Um, but I was careful but I was still, you know, like I was in Florida at least. I was, you know, seeing some palm trees and it was hot but I was really, really careful and I wasn't really doing much. Um, and then the day after I finish my medication, my throat starts coming back and it starts getting worse and worse and worse over those two days. And I started freaking out because I was like, I'm never going to be able to fly home. Like, what am I going to do? It's just getting worse and worse again. And seeing a doctor there was because it's U.S. dollars. We do have insurance, but my mom always thought, let's wait. Like, we'll pay for it. And if ever we come to Florida and one of us hospitalized and it costs thousands and thousands of dollars, we'll claim it then, you know? So we were like paying for a doctor here, it was about $250 US, which comes out to about 400, close to $400 Canadian right now at the exchange. So I was like, for that price I can just buy a plane ticket home and I'll be home at least. And if the medicine makes me really sick, like I won't have to take, worry about taking the plane. So I just came home, uh, like halfway through my trip, I flew back. And the next day, I went to the clinic, and I tested negative for a strep throat. And I was, like, devastated because they didn't want to give me anything. And I was like, listen, I was like, I tested negative last time, and you guys told me that if it was mono, I would not react to medication at all. My throat would stay the same. And two days later, I came in, and my throat almost went back to normal with that second medication. Um, so, and I tested negative for strep throat that time, too. I was like, if it's not strep throat and it's not mono, like, what else can it be? And they bas he basically told me, he's like, not much. Like, it's that or that. Like, it's one or the other. And I was like, is it possible I'm getting a false negative because um, I finished my medicine only three days ago? I was like, look, I know it's not good to take antibiotics for no reason, but that's why I'm here because I don't want to let it get as bad as last time before restarting something because since I just finished three days ago, maybe now if I take something else, like I was, it had almost went away, maybe it'll completely get rid of it. He's like, this is something I don't usually do, prescribe an antibiotic with a false negative, but you obviously have a very unusual situation. Um, 
and they don't know what to do with me basically so he prescribed me an antibiotic for 10 days both of the first antibiotics I had taken were in the penicillin family this one is not so he's like maybe you'll react better to this one so f this is my third day um, it has helped because if you would have seen me three days ago I couldn't talk at all it would hurt so bad to talk it still really hurts but I'm able to swallow to talk a little bit more, I'm able to drink a little bit of water now. So I'm doing. I had. Some, I managed to eat some soup before, so I am doing better. But my throat doesn't look much better than it did. The pain has has been better, but my throat doesn't look much better. So I'm making this video to to tell you guys what's been going on and say I'm really sorry about the videos. But as of right now, I still am sick. They don't know what to do with me. I need to see an ears, nose, and throat specialist, but it can take months to get those appointments, so I don't know what I'm going to do in between. I think that the next step, basically they told me if it doesn't go away now, you have to check yourself into the hospital and see what they can do for you. So, I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling very helpless and very discouraged because if this doesn't work, it's like, I feel like, is this ever going to go away, you know? And, I mean, it should normal people it does but I don't know I'm really stressing about it and I'm I just wanted to let you guys know um right now I'm feeling good like but no, I'm not feeling good enough to I'm so tired all the time I'm not feeling good enough to film videos and to put that energy in right now I'm really f trying to like they said take it so easy so that I can get rid of this once and for all and come back full force but as of right now, I'm not good enough to be filming. I just wanted to film an update so you guys knew where I stood. But I do have some pre-filmed videos that still haven't gone up. So I'm going to try and edit those and space them out so that you guys still get a little bit of content. But at least you'll know why those videos, first of all, I'm going to look a lot whiter. Um, and they might seem a little bit out of date compared to like what I would want to be filming now, like summer looks and stuff like that. But at least you guys will have something to watch if you guys want to stick with me. Again, I'm really, really sorry. And I think I'm going to go because I'm, I'm getting really, really tired right now. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who stuck with me. I wanted to give you guys an explanation and kind of let you know what's to come, what's not to come. And uh, hopefully soon I'll have an update and I'll be good again. <laughs> I'm really sorry once again, but thank you guys for all your love and support. I really appreciate it. I'm sure I'm going to have a ton. You guys are going to leave me some sweet comments. So thank you guys. I'll keep you updated in whichever way I can, but that's where I stand right now. So please, if you guys have had anything similar, whether you've had a recurring strep throat, I don't think mine is one that comes and goes that I recaught it. I think I've just had it consistently and it never left. That's how it feels. That's how my throat has looked but it never left. If you guys have had a recurring strep throat in that way, or you guys have had mono, because to this point I still don't know whether I've, I have mono, I think there's a very good chance that I did or I do still. I'm feeling a lot better than I was in terms of how tired I am, but I'm still sleeping like 14 to 18 hours, maybe 14 to 16 hours a day, which is very unlike me if you guys know. like I usually sleep four hours, six hours max during school. Six hours is a great night. Sometimes it's three or four and I'm okay. I'm used to not sleeping a lot. So, and I know that's not healthy. I, I know you guys don't need to leave me comments about that, but so I've been sleeping still a lot and my spleen, like right under your rib cage, has been swollen and bothering me, which is a sign of mono. They said it was very common to have mono and strep throat at the same time, I guess, which is why my body might be having a really hard time fighting off the strep throat because it's so weak from the mono. So please, if you guys have had either of these things, leave me comments letting me know what your stories were and how you dealt with it and maybe what you did to either make it go away or what helped like ease your symptoms a little bit. I've tried it all. I've tried eating ice cream, that's pretty much all I've managed to eat, eating soup, throat lozen lozenges, putting heating pads, like I've everything that I could find online I've tried, but if you guys have anything that you tried that really, really made a difference for you, please let me know because I could use all the help right now that I can get. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me, I really, really appreciate it, and there are more fun videos to come. I do have a ton of ideas and I can't wait to get back to filming. So if you guys have any suggestions, you can leave me a comment with that as well. And hopefully within the next few weeks, I'll be back. Um, if not, 
please enjoy my pre-filmed videos in the meantime and I again apologize I really don't want to neglect my channel but I know that you guys understand this is something that was out of my control and I just want to get better at this point so thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you in my next video bye